Hi. Wait, can hold you on. See I'm, I'm adjusting can my camera. Okay, wait. Hi, Echo. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. How's the weather there? Oh, it's Hello. nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it morning where you are? Yeah, it's morning. It's right now 11 a.m. right now where oh, I am. Morning. Goodness. Yeah. I was telling someone earlier, I was like, I'm doing this interview later. And they're like, what time? And I'm like, 10. And they're like, that's yeah. really late. And I'm like, well, <laughs> time zones are hard. <laughs> yeah. Usually people watch IG live during nighttime, like before they go to sleep. They usually that's watch it at time. Yeah. Usually daytime people don't really do that because they have to work, but it depends. But yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would wa I would watch us before going to bed. We'll lull you to sleep, everyone. Or wake you up with your morning coffee. <laughs> yeah. Sure, no problem. So uh, okay, so um Mermaid Echo, I'm so excited to have you on board today. And um I guess today I just want to we we want to know everyone wants to know more about you. Like do you call yourself <laughs> Echo? Are you Echo? Is your name Echo? Your real name Echo? Or No, it's not my real name, but it's the name that I go by by most people. So yes, I call you can call me Echo. That's the name I prefer and it's uh it's the one you're very welcome to use. So yeah. Okay, sure, Echo. That sounds great. So yeah. okay, so right now um we will want to start to know more about you, like what's your background and where are you from and everything about you. Yeah, it's yeah. really funny because a lot of people, I think, are curious about all of those things, but I don't really share a lot of that online. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to to share. Um, even though I'm, like, very open with my followers, I think I keep a lot of that nitty-gritty stuff private. But lo and behold, let's put it out there. Um, my name's Echo. I'm from Wisconsin uh, in the United States. And I was born and raised uh, around the Twin Cities, but in the Wisconsin side of things. And uh, I grew up, you know, splashing around in the river. There's a river that you might have heard of the Mississippi River. Um, I'm from Mississippi, yeah. River, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did. Yeah, it's a huge river, runs the, the length of the, the, the states, but um, before it becomes the Mississippi River, there's a river called the St. Croix, which runs into the Mississippi. So I'm on the St. Croix River, uh, and that's where I grew up. We grew up boating and swimming and sailing and canoeing and kayaking. If it had a boat or if it floated, it was a boat, you can, you can guarantee I've been on it. Um, so that's kind of my background. Um, I remember you know, leaving school and being picked up by my parents. And I would know that I was getting picked up because I could look outside and see our big boat on the trailer and they'd come and pick me up immediately after school. We'd go and head out on the river and try to catch sundown and stuff like that. So that kind of sparked my love for water and conservation. Um, and it got me passionate about caring for, for the water and, and the creatures in it. So now I work when I don't have a tail on, I work for the Department of Natural Resources. And what I do there is communications around around our wildlife in Wisconsin. So I help people learn more about, you know, what they can do to protect our wildlife or uh, how they can get outside and enjoy the parks and, and stuff like that. So it's a fun job. And uh, I've been at that for, I started in January this time around, but I was working there before I left for Ireland in 2019 as well. So, yeah. Well, like that sounds interesting. Isn't that wildlife like you're in like a forest setting, like trees, have you ever yeah. worked in such setting and you thought, oh, geez, I wish I was in the ocean right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. I, it's like your alter yeah. ego. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So I grew up on freshwater. So I always say, you know, Echo is a freshwater mermaid. There are there are saltwater mermaids that live in the ocean, but I do not. I live in I live in the freshwater. So I've always been a river maid, you know, somebody who who loves the river and the freshwater. But yeah, you're right. I did grow up in the woods. You know, I live in the woods now. Uh, but I've always felt a connection to both the woods and the water, but probably more so the water side of things for sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um. I actually connect with you on that level because I also love water. When I was young, I loved to be in the ocean. I loved the feeling of water all around me. But yes. when I was young, I didn't really learn how to swim until I grew up um, a bit older. So that's mm -hmm. how. So I guess you talk a lot about yourself. Maybe I'll just tell everybody about myself as well. Um, yeah. My name is Malcolm and I'm a writer. I'm the author of a book called um, Diary of a Rich Kid. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was because I was writing a book about mermaids and mer boys. 
And I think a lot of people out there are curious about this, this mythical creatures like mermaids and merboys. So I wanted to get people's perspective, people's idea all around the world. So people, some people are intrigued. What are those creatures? What 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 are people doing? Um, things like mermaiding. Do we call that mermaiding? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to get to know everyone's, everyone's perspective. I just talked to um, Mermaid Anna from Belgium the other day, and I talked to Mermaid, Merman Justin. So I would, like, I would like to know everybody's opinion on that. So I think it's very interesting because mermaiding is not a very common thing from, from where I'm living. It's not very common. I'm not sure about your place, Wisconsin. Is it very common to, to do mermaiding? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Some places in the States, but not where I'm from. Yeah. So that's the reason it makes it so unique and so interesting that it has some kind of allure to it because it's not so common. People are like, it's a niche thing. So yeah. So that's one of the reason. So I'd also like to know like, um, okay, moving on, I'd like to know like, what's your favorite music? Like, oh, songs? That's, a, that's a good question. I love this question. So my folks are musicians, actually, my parents, my mom, and my dad. So I grew up always music in the house you know there's strangers in the house playing music with my parents constantly that was my that was growing up all the time so I'd say probably I gravitate towards like classic rock which is really basic but that's that's my favorite kind of music you know like Queen Aerosmith you know all of the classics that's usually what I go for for sure so rock on. <laughs> great, great. okay I'll just share about my music I, I I used to like Broadway music like musicals um I love musicals like I love Cats, I love Wicked, you know, those songs. I don't know if, if you, you know about them. Mm -hmm. Wicked, yeah, musical, those, like, very... I also love classical yeah. music as well, especially because, because I find them very uh, calming and relaxing. So yeah, that's definitely. just about me. And what's your favorite quote in life? I have to say hi to Traveling Merman. Hello, friends, and hello, Emily Hansen. Hello, guys. <laughs> hi, everyone. Did you say my favorite quote? Ooh. You know, that's a really good question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. Um, but I would probably say, I think it's a, I think it's a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote, but it goes, uh, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. And I think if I were to pick a quote that I lived by, it would probably be that one. Because uh, I don't know if you know, but I actually like uh, left everything I knew here in America to go chase this dream of living in Ireland that I've always had of finding my people and my family and you know so I dropped everything moved to Ireland no idea what I was doing absolutely no clue what was going to happen you know didn't have a job didn't have an apartment had nothing but the clothes on my back uh, and landed and got a job and it was super cool pandemic hit wasn't expecting that but uh <laughs> But sure, look, we went, yeah, we went confidently in the directions of my dreams anyway. So I would say that's probably, that's probably my quote. Ralph Waldo okay. is such a vibe, isn't it, Alessandra? Yeah, so he's so cool, he's so cool, for sure. Yeah, to do something that um, no one has explored. I think that's a very good quote. Um, um, I, actually, I shared this quote with people that, that um, I always tell people that um, you only have one shot in life, you should do it. So that's how I started publishing my books, because yeah. I live by that quote. Like, you only live once. So if I don't do it now, I'm going to wait until I'm 60 years old or 70 years old, 70 years old till I die. Then, you know, like, on my death. But, okay, that sounds a bit morbid. But, um, yeah. No, so it's, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But there's one quote that I, I love recently that I really, um, it's about, like, um, whatever is happening to you is happening for you. Yeah, right. so I love that quote. So whatever bad things that have happened in my life or negative things or things that seems very tough, um, like trials and tribulations, I, I realized that they are happening to me is because they're happening for me. So it wants like for the best of me, like to maybe shape me to, to yeah. be better or, you know, so I think that is very strong quote. So I live by that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of that vibe of like everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. That's Love a very good quote. And your, okay, let's go to the cool one. What's your favorite food? Favorite food? You know, I don't think I can pick just one. My friend, you know, like, there's, like, so many foods. 
and there's so many tastes and it's all just like, oh, I don't think I could pick one. Although if you were to offer me like a really good mac and cheese, I will always eat that. So I'll probably answer that. And that's the most Wisconsin thing that I could say. But in all honesty, like you can never go wrong with a really yeah. good mac and cheese. <laughs> not, to sound very, not to sound very stereotypical, um, I, I think that a lot of Americans love mac and cheese. I always feel like, mac and cheese, mac okay. and cheese. Okay, yes. Like, when I was in Ireland, right, have you heard uh, of Kraft mac and cheese? It's like a blue box, super common uh -huh. mac and cheese brand, yeah? Okay, so when I was in Ireland, no Kraft mac and cheese anywhere to be found, like the box kind. Oh, my God. So I said to my mom, I'm like, Mom, can you ship me a box of Kraft mac and cheese? And she did, and I, like, portioned that like I was in a war starving to death. I swear to God. Like, <laughs> I, like, broke down the boxes and saved a little bit so that I could have Kraft mac and cheese once a week my entire year I lived there. Oh, my God, I missed it so much. It's so good. <laughs> so good. It's really good. Um, for me, my favorite food, I would say, is, like, if I really – don't really have to think so much. It's just at the back of my head. I'll just say ice cream. I love ice cream. Oh, just like ice cream, cream every day. Uh, yeah, but I should really control myself because, you know, if you don't wash it, then you just like, I explode. mean, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy while we're alive. That's what Yeah, we enjoy it. You have only one shot in life. That's right. Uh, favorite movie? What's your favorite um, movie? Gosh, I'm so bad at favorites because my brain, like, consumes things all the time and I just oh man I like Disney movies I'm really basic that way my favorite Disney Disney movie well. is Moana so probably if I were to pick a movie right now I'd probably say Moana but I also love um mystery movies and also like old timey movies so like the Twilight Zone it's not a movie it's a tv show love the Twilight Zone um that kind of thing so combination of like mystery horror and also Disney <laughs> Okay. For me, um, I also agree with you. I love Disney movies as well. But if you to, to ask me what really strikes me like is the best, um, actually, it's not a movie. It's a drama series. It's called Breaking Bad. Oh, yes. I, I, okay, to be honest with you, I'm not into movies that always, like, because this movie is all about drugs and stuff. I'm not really that kind of person. I like those, like, Disney-ish movies, like, happy movies. But, mm -hmm. but when I watched this drama, I felt so strong. A strong connection in that way maybe it's the performance they have stellar performance of the actors that like you feel like it's so real and yeah. the story is so good that when i when i watch the end of it i'm like left wow hanging good yeah. writing script writing i guess so yeah. i guess that really okay. strikes me as well. like, it's not my typical it's movie it's not my typical series but i kind of enjoy watching that yeah. Yeah. yeah no i can see that i haven't watched any of it but i've heard it's really good so yeah. yeah, it's really good. You, I mean, you should watch it for the story and the plot. The way it's... Oh, I should. You can I actually feel Justin. it. Hi, Justin. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, Justin. <laughs> oh, hi, Justin. So cool to have you here. Okay, and your favorite sea creature? What's your favorite sea creature? Mm -hmm. Not a sea creature, always. But I do love the sea otter, or just otters in general. River otters specifically are my very favorite. When I was learning to mermaid, I would watch them. There's like live streams of aquarium otters all across all over. You can find them on YouTube and watch them for hours and study how they swam and how they moved underwater. And that's how I uh, fashioned Echo's movements after was the river otter fun fact. So, yeah. yeah. The otters are kind of adorable. I've seen mm -hmm. videos of them. Uh, if you ask me, I know this sounds very cheesy. Um, I'll say dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, very they're, awesome. <laughs> they're brilliant creatures. That's not cheesy. It's a good taste. You have good taste, is what that means. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care that. Uh, okay. And what is your biggest fear about the sea? What is your biggest fear? Biggest fear about the sea? Probably humans. <laughs> okay. Probably. <laughs> Probably humans destroying it, honestly. Like, there's really nothing that we should be afraid of in the sea because we are the visitors of the sea. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we are afraid of something, it probably means we're not supposed to be there or it's, like, not good for us or that we've, like, villainized whatever it is. Like, the great white shark. Definitely more people get killed. And this is a true statistic. More people are killed every year by vending machines falling on them. Yeah. Than, than great white sharks right yeah, so like yeah. yeah so we you know i think humans destroying the ocean is what's most scary to me about that <laughs> yeah 
for yeah. me, what scares me about the the ocean or the sea is uh, great white sharks. Really? Uh, I think that that is because partly because of the movie Jaws. When I was young, I watched that and Fair. I was terrified. So whenever I go to the shower and when I close my eyes, I just like imagine that shark <laughs> coming at me, and I was like, yeah, I, I guess I have to blame Jaws for that. The movie, I mean, <laughs> cause that kind of irrelevant yeah. fear. So yeah. Um, what no, they're know? scary. Like the, the movie will make them seem scary, you know. Like yeah. that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but but then as you grow like much older, you kind of like oh, that's that is kind of like silly. I mean, I mean that when I was young, that was my fear. Like going to the water, I was like thinking it's gonna be a shark inside. It's gonna be <laughs> a shark. So yeah, but as now I grow older, I don't have that kind of feeling anymore. So but but I still have that childhood. Like, but if I really dig into it, then it will come out. But anyway, yeah. that's good. Uh, what do you love most about the sea? What do I love most about the sea? Well, probably the um, oh gosh, that's a really that's a really tricky question. Well, when I think of the sea, so I don't live on the ocean, right? I live um, in Wisconsin, where we're very much surrounded by lakes and rivers and stuff like that. So when I think of the sea, I think of my home in Ireland, which reminds me of my friends there and the traditions around the sea. And with that comes uh, year-long sea swimming. So these amazing people in Galway would uh, swim every day, year-round, no matter what the temperature is outside, no matter what the temperature it is in the ocean, sometimes like down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and they'd swim and it, like would give them crazy good health benefits. So I think of that. I think of my time with the Galway Hooker Sailing Club, um, which is kind of what I got really into when I lived in Galway. Um, and got uh, a close connection with the sea from from the club, which was really cool. So that's kind of a, a sidestepping your question. Um, but I don't think I've spent enough time in the sea to pick one thing about it. However, it does remind me like of my friends and time living on it. So yeah, I memories. hope that's a good. <laughs> good, that's good. Yeah, memories with your friends. I mean, that's one of the things that you forge, you know, um, yeah. the sea. Um, for me, I would say that the ocean waves, the, the crashing ocean waves, it feels very yeah. calming when you hear about it. I would hear the, the sound. Like, like um, when I, there was one time I felt like stressed and mm -hmm. I just took a walk at the beach. By just hearing that sound, the wet waves crashing against the shore, it's, it's really tranquil. It's very good for the mind. So yeah. I think that's one thing I like about the sea, the, the sense of tranquility of the sea. So, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now let's dive into the mermaid. <laughs> so how did this whole thing start about your journey as a mermaid? How did you start and what really inspired you to become a mermaid? I mean, yeah. to do some mermaid stuff. It's good, yeah, it's a good question. I think for most folks that I've met within the community, usually the story goes, oh, I was in love with Ariel or Aquamarine and I learned about the community and because of my lifelong love for mermaids, I had to join or something like that. For me, it was a little different. Um, I was not into Ariel. I actually wasn't allowed to like Ariel because my sister had red hair. And so that was her Disney princess, but I could like Belle, right? Um, so I didn't like Ariel growing up. Uh, wasn't specifically into mermaids, but loved the water, loved swimming, um, and was a gymnast and a diver for years and years. And so I think, um, yeah, so kind of a long story, but I'll, I'll sum it up really quick. I ended up injuring myself in gymnastics and I had to get surgery on my ankle. And because of the surgery, I wasn't able to do impact sports anymore. And the, the surgeon said, you can never be an athlete again. But that broke Ooh. my heart because that was like the biggest part of my identity, right? So I started swimming laps and doing competitive diving, like springboard diving. Um, and I got really bored with swimming laps. So I was Googling things like how to make swimming laps more fun. And I found monofins, you know, uh, and then through that, I found, um, fin funds website, which I'm sure you've heard of is like the, the classic fabric tail everyone starts with, you know, um, and there were monofins shaped like a mermaid tail. And through the fin fun website, I came upon the mer network, which I'm sure you can connect the dots there. Uh, for those of you who are new to the community, the, the mer network is kind of like Facebook, but for mermaids, I guess. And it's this really cool, like old fashioned internet forum. And you go on there and talk to people and learn all of the things. So I remember sitting in my college dorm, like 
spending the night till 3 a.m. reading forms about how to swim, how to build a tail, how to build a top, how to use your work for advocacy. And I just, it instantly clicked with me because at the time I was going to school to be a journalist, a reporter, and I wanted to do something passionate that would change the world for good, you know. Uh, and I've always been really into the environment. So I just kind of put the two together and also uh, my physical therapist at the time was like, this is actually really good for your ankle, right? So uh, with their support, I started swimming and kind of everything fell into place at the same time. And uh, yeah, I just started mermaiding. And <laughs> my first summer I launched the business, I was booked out every weekend. So since then, I really couldn't stop or pause or look back. And it's just been the continuous momentum since then. So <laughs> there That's you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like like what I say, like like this quote, like I say, like what's happening to you is happening for you. Like you know the, yeah. the injury, you, you because of the injury that you you had, it led you to all this thing. So yeah, I really think that is a really true quote for not just me, but for you know everyone. So yeah, yeah. can you give me a second? Yeah. I can you give me a second? I have to. Of course, give yeah. A I'll talk to the chat. Hello, chat. Oh, Mermaid Aisha, how are you? How are you guys? Let's see, we've got. Sindhu, we've got Mermaid Aisha, we've got Damn Boy, love that. Hi username. everyone. <laughs> Hi Mermaid Aisha. Hi Sindhu. Wow. Thanks for coming on board, everyone. We're gonna have a very interesting time with Echo. Uh, <laughs> shallow. Oh, that's new. Someone said shallow. That's very, Aww. very good. Shallow. Okay. Okay, um, the next thing I would like to, we would like to know is that you are a business owner of um, Mermaid Echo Entertainment. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us what does your company do and yeah, yeah. how does it impact? Absolutely. So I launched the business in 2016, having no idea what I was doing. I was 18 years old. I was totally in over my head, but I didn't know it, right? So I just started doing things you know, throwing stuff at the wall and saw what stuck. And it was really fun because I was going to school for journalism and, and marketing and communications and all that. So what I was learning in the classroom, I got to apply directly to my business, which was really cool because I feel like I learned so much more, so much faster being able to test out what we were learning. You know, can I write a press release for my business and will newspapers publish it? How can I write that press release? How can I get into newspapers? You know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, so I launched a business when I was 18. And right off the bat, pretty much, uh, I branded myself as an educator, mostly. And I still am a very proud to call myself an educator. So what you get if you book Echo uh, is an education session, curriculum. Um, I wrote a book. We read the book at schools and libraries. I also do birthday parties, but um, not as much because I try to, you know, push the, the education and the curriculum and the engagement with the environment. Um, and so, yeah, we, we learn about microplastic pollution, but we also learn about how young uh, environmental stewards can get involved in their communities and do activism work from the ground as young people. I think that's really important. Um, and uh, yeah, I just try to connect kids with their local resources and teach them about the environment through a mermaid. <laughs> so it's a good time. That's yeah. interesting. You mentioned that you were studying journalism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know what? We have something in common. I did study journalism as well. Did but, you? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, but somehow I find that becoming a reporter or a journalist, um, I'm more into the creative writing type. Yeah. I should have taken creative writing as my major, but I took journalism. Yeah. But I mean... Same. Yes. Same. Yeah, so we have that in common. <laughs> Just to point it out. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. um, this led you to opening up your business, uh, Mermaid Echo Entertainment. So somehow you sort of I think you find that that aligns with what you want to do, like educating yeah. people about the environment. For me, when I do my journalism, um, it's, all, it's all about reporting. When I, I went out to report uh, CEOs and stuff in, in the past when I was doing it, I find that my strongest passion is more on creative writing, where you can mm -hmm. like writing books, novels, fictional worlds. So, so that's how I started to align myself with that. Just like yeah. what you do for your business. Like from journalism, you align your talents in writing, doing press releases to educating people. Right. So yeah, I guess we have yeah. that in common. Um, so, okay. 
in one or oh, I, I, this quote that you wrote in your IG, I saw you say less plastic, more mermaids. I love that. <laughs> less yeah. plastic, more mermaids. Um, you were talking about like the climate change and the environment. Like, okay, we want to know as everybody watching, um, as as ourselves, what can we do? What are the small steps that we can do to help the environment? Like, it's a great question. And so I'll talk about what I know, which is mostly microplastic pollutions. There's so much you can do as a human being to reduce your, your waste on the planet. And actually, the biggest thing you can do is call your representatives and demand that corporations stop uh, waste and stop carbon emissions. But as an individual human being, some things you can do are buy a reusable coffee mug. Just just stop buying cups. Keep one in your car. Keep one at home. And just make sure you always have one on you. No excuses. Challenge yourself. See if you can go an entire month without using a coffee cup that you buy from Starbucks or whatever. Okay, num that's number one. Number two, same with the straws. Same exact thing. Same with the water bottles. You know, uh, don't buy, uh, don't allow yourself to buy a water bottles. Challenge yourself. Make it a fun. Make it a game. Right. But the other things that people don't necessarily think about that are less obvious are buy thrifted clothes, wash your clothes less often, wash your clothes in larger loads less often because the number one pollutant from household um, wares is not necessarily throwing away cups because cups take years and years and years to biodegrade. But the microplastics that fall off of clothes and go directly into the water system are in the millions per load. So if we can reduce our plastic waste through our clothes washing, we can actually have a much bigger impact on reducing our individual emissions that way, which is really interesting. A lot of people don't necessarily think about that. So how can you, you know, weave sustainable living into every fiber of your living, not just take away containers or cups um, and really like analyzing things that way. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about the part you mentioned about the clothes washing. Because it's we crazy. usually wash our clothes and it's like, okay, we put everything in the washing machine and we don't think about the, that, you know, that's very good. That's very good. I don't think a lot of people know about it. So, yeah. So, everybody yeah. listening, do that. <laughs> do what people <laughs> tell you to do. Yeah. Period. Buy more denim. <laughs> Wear denim. <laughs> that is very revelatory. I mean, what you say. That I didn't know about that. So, yeah, um, interesting. okay. Um, so another question. Um, okay, you meant, I think you, uh, I will just read this quote that you you wrote. Um, by twenty fifty, the ocean is expected to contain more plastics than fish. Um. So, and then you mentioned about leaf footprints and not trash. So, what was that moment that um, what was that moment, that first moment that led you to take this whole environment seriously? What was the trigger? Yeah, I think I've been, I've been asked this question before and my brain always comes back to one pivotal moment. I was maybe six, maybe, and we were out on the river like we did every day in the summer, you know, and I used to spend as much time as I could humanly possible underwater, you know, um, and I would come up for a second and like take a breath and like go back under. And there was this one very specific time I remember where I was underwater and I don't know what I was doing under there. I just liked being underwater. I was like feeling around and in one handful of sand, I came up with a bobby pin, a bottle cap, a beer cap or something, like three or four pieces of garbage. And I was sick. So this was duh, almost 20 years ago. And um, I was just feeling like, this is the first time I've come up from the bottom of the river with this much trash in my hand. And I was six, so my hand was tiny, you know? And it just, it really broke my heart a little bit. And I remember it, it's one of those memories that's just so clear in your brain. And I think back on it, and I really do think that was like the pivotal moment where I was like, oh, this isn't supposed to be here. You know, what can we do as humans to make sure we stop other humans <laughs> from letting these things get here? Um, it's a really simple memory, but I think that would be my honest answer for sure. So it started you know. when you were six years old. Six years old. I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. think so. Yeah, I I very clearly remember thinking this is bad. It shouldn't be here, and I want to not let it be here. You know. So yeah. yeah. I guess what's interesting about this whole thing is that um, usually we have like, I mean, everything that 
that um, happens in our present self, in our adult self, is usually part of our childhood. Yeah. Like, like my writing is actually, it comes from my childhood. I love writing when I was young, but, but I didn't really focus on my writing because everyone tells me that writing, you can't make it, you know. So yeah, what's interesting is that everything that triggers is always from a childhood. Like when you're six, you saw the trash and you couldn't, oh, I can't, I can't take it anymore. So as, <laughs> as an adult, you have more, um, you have more power, you have more ability to, to turn it around. So yeah. I guess that's, okay. Um, and then in your Instagram, you mentioned this quote, rest is self-care. Rest is self-care. Rest is self-care. You, yeah. you repeated that a few times. So mm-hmm. you say that in a way that you need to take a breather. What, what do you do to actually slow down? Yeah. I think one life. thing about my Instagram posts is you can always tell what I'm thinking or feeling by my, by my captions because most of the time it's a reminder to myself, you know? So I think on that day I was so exhausted. I was running all over and I personally get to this point where if I stop, everything crashes. So I just make myself keep going and I couldn't let myself stop on that day. But one thing I could do was make that post and hopefully remind somebody else who wasn't in this like repetitive toxic cycle that I was in that rest is self care because it's funny, you know, we, we know these things in our brain, but sometimes we can't always practice them or internalize them. And so I think you know, I really need to be better at practicing what I preach. <laughs> I put I put things out on social media because most of the time I'm struggling with them personally. Um, so do I practice that? No, very rarely do I practice resting. But um, I hope that by talking about it, perhaps somebody will think about resting for yeah, a second. That's true, that's true. One of the reasons yeah. I pick out this quote, uh, I really took a, uh, plot this quote from your IG is because in a way, I can relate with that because um, what, what, well, there was a time when I was like, like writing and writing and writing and writing and writing, and I, I didn't stop. And and somehow I got stuck. Like my brain feels like there's like a, something wedged inside. So so I took a break and I took a walk in the beach or at the park. And I realized that when you are living in the present moment, you you are connected with what you you have. You feel much freer and and my writer's block became like lifted immediately. So I, I believe that um, everybody should take a break from what you do. Sometimes we just want to achieve our goals. We just don't care, you know? So I believe that taking a break is very vital for our mental health and our well being. So I really agree with that. So I, I plug out that quote. Yeah. yeah. So everybody out there, take a break. You really need yeah. to take a break. <laughs> take it from me and from Echo. <laughs> Someday I'll take one too. Not today. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, okay, there's another quote that you mentioned. Okay, I'm just going to talk about two quotes and we're going to move on to different things. And you say, lately I've been facing a lot of big decisions. Why can't I stick to one plan? Why do I have to question everything? Sometimes it feels like swimming into a concrete wall. Um, what do you actually mean by that quote? And... Have you actually resolved it or come to terms with it? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think this circles back to the first thing we talked about in the interview is I share so much with my online audience, but I tend to be really picky about exactly what I share. Um, And so in that case, I wasn't comfortable sharing yet what the decision was about. I can talk about it now. Um, But I wanted to use my feelings of you know, turmoil to perhaps remind somebody else to be gentle with themselves, which is what I really needed to hear in the moment. But I wasn't hearing that. So perhaps somebody else could hear it too. And that's like uh, the overview practice. What I do with with my Instagram is that is take what I'm struggling with inside and hopefully help somebody else, you know, Um, If I can't help myself, maybe somebody else can learn from me. And so in that moment, I was trying to decide, I think it was like grad school. Yep, it was grad school. So I had just moved out of my parents' home after just landing back in uh, uh, America, after not expecting to have to land back in America. So it was a really tumultuous time in my life. 
and I was applying to grad schools and I couldn't decide if I wanted to go um, back to Ireland for grad school this fall or not. And I ended up deciding I was not going to do that um, in favor of staying in this job that I have now for another year. So I have decided uh, that I will not be returning to Ireland this year, um, but I do have a spot in the program for next fall should I so choose. So yeah, things have been decided. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's right. I mean, I think everybody goes through that same thing that you went through. So I just thought I would like to talk about it. And for me personally, I also went through what you went through. I felt like sometimes it feels like swimming into a concrete wall. Like I also get that sometimes, like with my life decisions. So um, for me, it's mostly about my writing career. Like I, I, I used to say, don't do writing. I took, I took a lot of different kind of jobs and that's not, that's not really related to what I love to do. But yeah. I came to a point in my life that that when I did what I love to do, I feel like life is just so much better, so much meaningful. So I guess we all have that struggles. But but once we realize what we need to do, it it really makes a whole lot better for us. Definitely. And it's okay to like hang out at that concrete yeah. wall, you know? Like yeah. it's okay to just chill there for a minute and be gentle with yourself and recognize that you are at a concrete wall and that's okay, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I think... People can remember that too. Yeah, and that. They, they say that it's okay not to be okay. I love that. It's okay not to be okay. Sometimes we, we need that. Um, okay, there's another quote that you mentioned. We'll go to this last quote that you have. Um, I wanted to help spread a little encouragement to our most powerful friends. Sometimes it gets, gets heavy hiding the loudest parts of ourselves. Um, what do you mean by the heavy hiding the loudest part of ourselves? Yeah, it's a, really, it's a really good question. So when I was growing up, um, I've always been super fiery, super like, I'm going to give you everything of me in one sentence the minute I meet you. I don't understand filters. I don't understand holding parts of myself back. I'm just going to tell you all the things right away. And I'm also going to convert you to you know, whatever agenda I have on the list today, whether that's ocean conservation or I don't know, whatever. Um, but my mom would always say to me, Claire, you got to open yourself up like a flower. That's my real name is Claire. You got to open yourself up to people like a flower and like be gentle, let them get to know you a little bit at a time. But in like good advice, like, you know, love her, love my mom. Thanks, mom. But it really felt restricting. It felt like I had to walk around the world with a shawl on. Like I couldn't be myself because I was too much, just too much for the world. I was too colorful. I was too eccentric. I was too loud. I was too creative. All of these things I just had more than anybody else had and nobody was ready for that. And it's exhausting to, to live your life that way. And so I think one thing I wanted to just remind people of in that post is like, hey, if you've been told that you're too much, you're not too much. You're just amazing and too amazing sometimes for other people. And that's okay. And like, I see you being extra. I see you being magical and sparkly and perfect and all of the things and you're doing great, you know, um, because I think a lot of us, especially in the creative world, like you and I are in feel like we're told that we're too much sometimes, but that's just our power, you know? That's what makes us special. And I think that the world tries to get rid of that sometimes. I think that what you say is true. Um, people usually fear what they don't understand. Like sometimes mm -hmm. when you show too much of who you are, um, people just, they, they can't recognize that. They, because there's something that they don't understand. So you know, I go through this myself, like by my personality, but, but I believe that it's always, always the fundamental thing is to be yourself, your let your personality shine. Um, because you cannot please everybody in this world. Some people might like you, some people might not like you, some people might hate you. So yeah, yeah. So I, I, I believe that is true. And I like that analogy, anal analogy that you made, that's how your mom said like, but be like a flower. <laughs> Be like a it's flower. cute. It's cute, but I don't agree with it. I think I should be able to be a firecracker all the time. And yeah, if people yeah. Don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was good advice for a child. Um, it was. And she's she's trying her best with, you know, me. So well done to her. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Now let's get to the mermaid part. Uh, what's the most expensive tail that you ever bought? 
Uh, that would be my Spellbound. I think it was 1800. It was um, right after, so Mer Taylor started making Spellbounds, and then he switched the, the scales from his traditional, like, uh, U-shaped scales to his more um, koi fish-shaped scales. And then after that, he got rid of the seams. So there were, like, two, two editions, I guess, of Spellbounds. So mine was one of the very first without seams and with the new scales. So I think it was, like, oh. 18. They're much more now, as they should be. But, yeah. Is it, like, $1,500? Yeah. $1, so that one was eighteen hundred dollars. My my first tail, my basic tail, was fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, because I think I saw on Instagram you mentioned I was like like the most expensive tail that you bought was fifteen hundred. Also, it's eighteen hundred. Oh, it's okay. yeah. So that that's that would be incorrect. <laughs> okay, so okay, eighteen hundred. Might have been an older post, but yeah, this one was eighteen hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the cheapest tail tail that you can get for like beginners like that want want to try out? What's the cheapest? Like, well, on average, you have to be, price. Yeah. yeah, you have to be really careful because if you want to buy the cheapest tail, you're not going to have a safe tail, which is way, way more important than money because your life is priceless, right? That's what I always okay. tell parents. So you could go online, theoretically, and you could buy a $20 tail. Is it going to be safe? No. <laughs> but what you can do that would be safe and you could get a tail that will A, last a long time, B, not make you drown, and C, be super beautiful, is buy a fin fun tail. That's always the tail that I direct people to first, what I've started in. Um, it has a safety release system, super easy to learn in. You can't go wrong. Um, I love them. So, and they're what? I think like 45 for a tail skin and maybe 45 also for a monofin. I'm not sure. I haven't looked on their site in a really long time though. So yeah. somewhere for me. Will you recommend, uh, okay, for all the beginners out there who are watching us right now um, that wants to, can you, can you recommend a place they can buy, which site they can go and buy? Yeah, finfun.com. Finfun.com, <laughs> okay, everybody. Finfun.com, that's where I would say, that's where I direct all parents and when I teach my uh, mermaid scholar school, that's what, those are the tales I use too, so. Okay, so for those of you who wants to become a mermaid or a merman, there's actually more benefits than like, than you ever thought. So um, I saw that you posted that um, that one of the benefits of becoming a mermaid is cold water therapy. Yeah. So can you explain what all the benefits like that you can uh, get? I don't I don't know a lot about cold water therapy. I think I just researched it for that post, and I had recently watched like a a Try Guys video. Have you heard of the Try Guys? No. They're like. No, they're like these online personalities and they make YouTube videos and they did a thing where they, they try things. That's their shtick. And they tried cold water therapy and they talked about all of these benefits. And, um, one of the, the, one of them being like higher metabolism. So you could like lose weight faster if you were on a specific workout regimen. Another one is like, um, less nerve damage. If you have nerve damage or like reduced pain or like, you know, uh, reduced pressure points or stuff like that, just like all kinds of um, immuno benefits. Um, and recently after I watched that video, we did a beach clean in uh, Michigan and the water temperature was like 50 degrees. And I'm like, I'm going in because I just watched a video about cold water benefits, you know, and then I was like, this is really cool. I did feel a lot better after that swim. So then I made a post about it. But I really don't, I really don't know that much about it. What I can attest to for mermaiding is um, uh, like just the therapy aspect, I guess, both both physical and mental. After a mermaid swim, I feel so much better. I feel like underwater is the only place where my brain shuts off for a minute, you know, and I can actually think. Um, and then, of course, just on a physical level, like I learned to walk again through mermaiding. I was able to recover from my ankle surgery through mermaiding. If it weren't for being able to swim with my surgery foot and my regular regular foot supporting each other right next to each other, it wouldn't have been able to swim, you know? So um, I think there are endless benefits, absolutely. Yeah, from what I talk to people about uh, mermaiding, they say that mermaiding is an, it's an escape, like, like you know, mm -hmm. one, like you are escaping to another world, like from the stress of life. So it's, I think that's also a benefit. Like you, so it really really is your struggle. Like for you say for your mental well being and stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Have you ever watched Disney's The Little Mermaid? Yes. Yes. Okay, pick one character. Okay, there's um pick one character. 
Sebastian, Slounder, Ariel. Which one do you pick? Can I pick Ursula? Do I have to pick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay nice. Ursula is by far my favorite. Okay, okay, let me tell you why. She's the true hero of that movie. Okay, Ursula knows that changing yourself for a man is not something we should do. So she teaches it real through like tough love, you know, right? Okay, so Ursula is the unsung hero of Ariel um, and I love her. But between those three that you offered, I would probably say Sebastian. Like I am definitely an angry red crustacean that's like telling people not to go <laughs> into the unknown because I'm just a hermit down in my little hole. That's me, yeah. <laughs> Ur Ursula has swag, she has style. I mean, she is really like, you know, I think she's yeah. quite cool in that sense. Even though she's a villain, but she's kind of cool. She has swag. Yeah. She's a fashion icon drag queen, and we love her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I would choose maybe Sebastian, because he has that kind of vibe that is so cool. Like, you know, like somebody that you just want to talk to when you're down, like a friend, that kind of thing. So Sebastian yeah. will be my, one of my... Um, okay, so this is, also, this is also regarding Disney's The Little Mermaid. Do you know okay. that they're gonna have a live action movie for that? Yeah. yeah. The live action, the live action movie for the Little Mermaid. Do you know they are coming up with the movie? Yeah, and with Halle, Halle Berry, I think. With Halle Berry, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of backlash regarding mm -hmm. the casting of um, a woman of color as mm -hmm. as the character. So, what are your thoughts on all of this? Well, I love it. I think we need more representation of people of color in the media and especially in a really popular Disney movie. Um, however, <laughs> I do think that Disney tends to um, perhaps parade their own successes when it comes to inclusion and representation, which I think is kind of gross. I think that they should probably do uh, more of it and not parade it around like they're so cool for doing it one time, you know? Uh, we need to hold them accountable and demand that they um, create representation in more spaces all of the time, not just when the movie's popular, you know? Um, but I think it's great. I think it's step one, you know, and I'm so, so happy for Halle Berry. Uh, she's gonna be amazing and would make a perfect aerial and I cannot wait for it to come out. I will definitely be going to see it. <laughs> do you know do you know what I'm really excited about at the casting? I want to hear her singing voice. That's the most important thing. Because Ariel yeah. has a nice voice and if she can do that, she can hit that attempt, wow, that would be so cool. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Very yeah. Incredible. I think she has a nice singing voice. Yeah. That that's how. Okay. Um Do you Okay, wait. Maybe I'll just skip this one. Okay. Do you have any favorite mermaid movies? Like besides Disney, still the mermaid, or is that your your own yeah. to go? No, movie? I actually go movie. here. I'll get you a um a little thing to show you. I'll get a prop. So I oh, I like the little mermaid just fine, but it's not like it's not a movie that I would like watch for fun. I don't like Ariel very much actually, but. Aquamarine was the movie that I grew up with. So this is a movie, or this is a necklace that um, Virginia Mermaid makes. And they're movie-accurate replicas of the Aquamarine necklace, and I just love them. And that's the movie that I grew up watching. Um, I thought Aqua was so hot, and <laughs> I just loved her. And her tail was beautiful because it was blue, and yeah, so that's yeah, probably I think I watched, I watched that when I was young, but I don't really have any strong memory of it. I just know there's a mermaid, that's all. I, but I think Disney's Little Mermaid is so commercial, so popularized in the world that most people know about it. So that's one of the reasons I know about it. But Aquamarine, I think I've just seen it, but I don't have any strong recollection about it. It's good, I know yeah. it's a mermaid. Um, okay, I just think I'll just go back to this question about Disney's Little Mermaid because I think it's very interesting that you mentioned about Ariel that you don't really, uh, I won't say not really not like her, but okay, this is the question. The Little Mermaid has actually received both good and bad reviews. Mm -hmm. And some people say that Ariel shouldn't have given up her voice for a man. She has, she has, she's very, um, I don't know what you say in this world like against feminism or what, 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 what you call um, she shouldn't have given up her voice to be with her true love, and she is seen as very gullible. Sorry. And so in a way, it has like kind of 
I would, would I say a bad influence on kids. So do you think that movie could have been done better for the audience? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a Disney princess movie, right? So it is what it is. I think if I were to critique it, The Little Mermaid, I would critique all of the Disney movies in one sitting, you know, I don't, I wouldn't pile it all on Ariel. Um, but like, that's a, that's a big reason why I don't especially love the Disney princesses. I don't think that they are a powerful representation of femininity, but they can be, you know, if that's, I, I also don't want to shame any, you know, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Like I am not going to sit here and say, I don't love Disney music because I love Disney music and I love Disney movies, but I don't think that it's, it is the best role model for for young people you know um but also there's magic there and there's whimsy there that you can't you can you know you can't deny it is absolutely there so i don't know it's a slippery slope like if i were to say ariel is bad and demeans feminism for all young women then like i would have to say that about all disney princesses which could be true but i think as long as you're introducing young people to other means of, you know, empowering movies and media, then like there's no harm in it, you know? <laughs> like yeah. um yeah. So personally personally for me, I think there's no harm for it because I find that as generation goes, we, we progress, like movies progress. Like you see Disney movies now and Disney movies about twenty years ago, they're so different in the team. Some of the teams that were used like a decade ago or ten years ago wouldn't have played well today in our generation. So I guess, I mean, it happened that time because it was during that moment. But now, as we progress in our, like, evolve, I, so I guess that is just, like, you know, part of history or how it happened during that, that, that period of time. So for me, yeah. it's just, like, we progress, we move on. Now, like, Disney's, Disney's movies are so much different than Disney yeah. movies in, in the 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next thing I want to ask is for newbies out there, how, what would you suggest them to do if they want to start out as a mermaid or a merman? What would, yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a bunch of different routes you can take. So that would probably be the first thing that I would suggest is decide what you want to do with your mermaiding or mermanning or merpersoning, whatever. Do you want to become a professional? If so, do you want to teach lessons? Do you want to be an educator? Do you want to be an influencer? Do you want to be a model? Um, do you want to be a hobbyist? If so, do you want to just do it by yourself? Do you want to connect with pods? The options are endless and you won't know what all of them are until you just start. So what I would say is hop on Facebook, search for groups that you would be interested in joining. Say you are a mermaid of color. Um, there's a Facebook group called uh, Mermaids of Color. Join that. Say you're a gay mermaid like myself, you know, hop on Facebook and search queer mermaids. Join that one. Connect with people who are similar to you and ask questions, you know, hop on lives like this one and learn from people who are already out there doing it. Um, DM people and you might not always get a response, but just keep trying uh maybe not with the same person but like keep <laughs> keep trying to learn i know i personally have a youtube channel where i put out free resources for merfolk um i have a whole playlist called teach mer with mermaid echo where i will teach you how to swim how to blow bubbles uh bubble kisses and hearts and rings and backflips and all of the things uh there's also a tutorial on how to make your first mermaid crown or stuff like that so there's tons of resources uh, if you want to start as a, a business, what I did was I bought all of Mermaid Reina's books and I read them cover to cover a couple times and then I just did it, you know, and you're going to make mistakes. I think that's the biggest lesson there is you will mess up and that's okay. That's part of it. Uh, it's all about how you recover and if you're just a good person uh, and, and have good business practices, you won't mess up big time and it'll be okay. <laughs> That's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting what you say. Like, like mermaiding, we always thought that, oh, you just want to be a mermaid, you just put on a tail and you just jump into the ocean and swim, you know. But like what you mentioned, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of ways to be a mermaid, like for businesses, for educational purposes, for recreation. So there's a lot of that so that people don't know about. They think it's just like, oh, you just put on a tail. So yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought of wanting to write a book 
about how to be a mermaid. I think you should. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I actually really enjoy video format. So I I'm thinking about doing like a Patreon, like how to launch your mermaid career Patreon, yeah. because I feel like that's a little bit. Um, not more lucrative, but just more interesting to me, I suppose. Uh, I really have enjoyed my YouTube channel and producing content on there and doing video format that way. I haven't thought about doing a book, though, uh, for, like, teaching people how to be a mermaid. But I have I have a book. A, uh, it's like a, a kid's book about microplastic pollution. So I did that. <laughs> oh, I wrote a book. What's it called? Yeah. What's it called? It's it's called One Mermaid's Mission, and it's the story of Echo uh, traversing across the oceans to save the humans. Can we find that on? Can we find that on, on Amazon? Can we find that on Amazon or? No, unfortunately, um, I'm working on trying okay. to find a publisher, um, okay. but <laughs> it's in the works. It's in the works. I okay. have like hard copies that I bring to libraries and stuff, but it's not like officially published with a company yet. So that was my, that was one of my goals for 2020 that was not realized. <laughs> yeah, I do write about mermaids uh, and merboys by fiction. So I'm, I'm not, I, I won't write those like nonfiction guides or whatever. I'm more of a fiction person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my book's definitely a fiction book. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, what's your advice for aspiring mermaids? Like if you had an advice for them? Aspiring Mermaid's advice. Um, just start. If I were to give somebody two words, I would say just start. I think the mermaid community can be really intimidating at times, and there can be spaces in the mermaid community that are not always welcoming. Um, and so it can be really easy to just not. But I think if you just start, if you find some way to just start swimming or, you know, looking for a tail or connecting with people, you will be well on your way to finding your path and um, enjoy it, you know, enjoy the ride, enjoy the people you meet, enjoy the opportunities you get and uh, don't be afraid to just jump in, pun intended. <laughs> hey, don't be afraid to jump in everyone. Don't be afraid, just do it, <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Okay, do you have any passion besides mermaiding? Do you have yes. any other passion? Oh my okay, God. Yes. Um, it's funny you ask. I, I think so. Growing up, my friends said that I was the jack of all trades, master of none, which was their um, humbling phrase. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you name it, I've probably tried it. Um, growing up, my big things were poetry, creative writing, uh, viola, I play the fiddle. Um, sailing was a big one, still is a big one. I was a sailing instructor for about five years. Um, slam poetry, I've uh, led spoken word open mics uh, in Ireland and America. And I do dance, I do belly dance, uh, contact juggling, veil work, all of the above. Wow. I was a diver gymnast. That's a lot of passion. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of passion. Yeah. Crafting, yeah. I, make, I make things, yeah. Wow. wow. You yeah. should monetize some of your passion. I think it'll be great. For me, um, for <laughs> me, it's mostly writing, but I also love traveling as well. I like, I like to see the world. I mean, traveling, traveling is so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love to experience different cultures. It's just really, really um, enlightening when you do that. So that's my favorite. And watching movies as well. Say, yeah, I always say, like, if people want to learn or grow or become a, a more mature person, travel. Like, just hop on a plane because there's no better way to uh, learn more about yourself and where you come from than experiencing others, you know? Yeah. yeah. Totally agree with that. Totally, totally agree with that. Okay, so we're going almost to the last of the questions. Um, um, it's, we are not in the midst of a pandemic and it's a very challenging time for everybody. I, I suppose not only for my country, but for the whole world. Um, mm -hmm. Is COVID-19, the pandemic, is it affecting your mermaiding at the moment or? At the moment, not so much. I think we're getting to the point right now where um, I am accepting gigs and you know we're doing things safely, um, all following CDC guidelines, but absolutely during 2020 absolutely affected everything. I also moved my business international. So that was really hard. It was, it was already an uphill battle and then COVID hit and I lost everything. You know, I had invested um, <clears throat> multiple plans and projects that fell through because of COVID lost a lot of money and it sucked big time because I was in a different country. You know, I had 
no savings. I had no family. I had no stability. Um, and I lost my job, uh, my full, full time job. So it was really hard. But you know, you learn and you grow and you adapt and you survive because you have to, you know, so um, the business survived, I moved everything back here, I lost a couple of assets, but overall, it was fine. And I hope to, you know, break even with revenue this year and recover from that. But um, it's really important, to everyone out there, if you're hiring performers, tip them, pay them well, uh, life was tough. <laughs> But, you know, I, I like to say, like, I did it on hard mode, uh, so I don't expect things to recover anytime soon. Those were the choices I made, and you learn, you know, like I was saying earlier. So, yeah. yeah it was really bad. Like, like the other day, I went to, uh, I, I took away my meal outside. I went to take away, do take away. And um, because currently, we're not allowed to dine in outside. So you're only, you're only allowed to do take away. So... I went to ask this business owner and she said that business is really bad. Um, she oh. said that the business has dropped so much uh, because now we're not allowed to dine out. So yeah. right now you, you can't even do things like swimming. You can't go to the, the pool. You can't um, do like activities that have more than 10 people or 20 people. So you can do big functions. So it's really kind of, kind of constrictive, restrictive in that yeah. sense. So it's really bad. So for me, um, for me, most of us would just stay at home and, and just do what we can, and I, I think, but I think your your, um, I mean, in the U.S., I think it's much more. It's opening up, businesses are slow, slowly opening up, but it's very different right here because the cases have spiked and the government is really like doing a lot of things to restrict everybody from going out. So, yeah. So right now, hopefully that will go away soon, yeah. so we can go out well, again. Well, I'm thinking of you, and I hope it passes soon. That's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One last question. What are you doing for your mental health during this crisis, during this time? It's an important question. And it's mental health, I always say, is a muscle and it will weaken if you don't take care of it. Right. So I a very proudly and openly have a therapist that I love and I have been going to therapy for five years, I think now. So I love therapy. I recommend it for anybody who jives with that. Um, and that, yeah, that's, that's what I do. You know, I go weekly and it, it really helps just to have somebody to talk through with things and not every session is going to be fun. Um, but I think it's important to like work through everything. And I think it really helps the people around me because I'm not a, a stress depressed you know, person. I have an outlet for that and I can work through problems with her and then like leave them there and then do my life. So that's how I take care of myself. But, um, you know, you can always do more. You can always look out for yourself in other ways. Like we were saying earlier, I could slow down. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. It's good to have someone to talk to. Like you said, like your, your therapist is good. Uh, for, mm -hmm. for me, during this, this time, like pandemic, you can really do a lot of things. You can travel. You can, you can, you know. So I just do a lot of my writing. I, I, I watch movies, read books. But sometimes you can't stay at home too long. So sometimes I, the only thing that we're allowed to do um, in terms of sports or recreation activities is jogging. We're allowed to oh. do that. But it has to be like um, one person like with a social distancing mm -hmm. put in place. So that's the only thing that we're allowed. So once in a while, I will go out for a jog. That will help mm -hmm. me to relax my mind and to keep me sane <laughs> during this time. Because before the pandemic hit, I actually did a lot of school visits uh, as, an, as an author. I, I go to school oh. visits. And I always have a lot of people around me, go shopping malls, book fairs. It was, it was really, really that period of time that there was a buzz. But right now, it's a completely different world. It's as if your world has turned upside down. So right now, I have to really have to learn to adapt. And I think I'm doing okay, I guess. So yeah, I, for everyone out there, just do what you can to keep yourself sane through this period, difficult yeah. time. So hopefully Definitely. that we pray that um, all of this will soon go away. I think it will. Yeah. Definitely it will. I, yeah. I hope. I hope that will go away. Yeah. With the vaccination and everything. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to hang in there just a little bit longer. Are, are vaccines available where you are? Yes, yes. We're currently on a phase of vaccination, but I still have, I'm not vaccinated yet. Have you been vaccinated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have been for months. Oh, okay. But it, crazy because my friends in Ireland are only just getting to like people 39 to 40 I think so it's like it's insane I mean ugh, 
we could have done it so much better. You know, America has an overflow of vaccines and the world uh, needs them and we should be giving them to people who want them, you know? So it's, it's a mess. It's a mess out there. <laughs> I'm waiting right now. I'm, I'm on the waiting list right now for the vaccine. So I'm just waiting for them to call me and um, I'm going there as soon as I can, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Well, cross my fingers for you. I hope that you get your vaccine soon. I hope so too. If I had them, I would ship them to you. <laughs> oh, that would be great. That would be great. I'm, actually, I'm very, I'm so excited of getting a vaccine. I've never been so excited about vaccines before, but right? every time I'm so excited about vaccines. Yeah, this is the, I know. It's yeah. like they put it in your arm and then you're like, it's a whole new world, you know? And you're like, oh my God, like I'm on the other side of this thing. And then you walk out of the house. Usually when it comes to vaccinations, like, you, you know, like injections, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, for, but at this moment, I'm, I'm so excited. I need the vaccine. I said, I'm... I'm Please, please call me immediately. I don't tell them. I already signed. I already, I already registered, and I'm waiting for them to call me. So I'm so excited. Hopefully, I get well, my vaccine I remember, soon. I remember that feeling too. I I went through that too, and it's so torturous. Like <sighs> waiting for the call. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Maybe once everyone's vaccinated, we can go traveling each other. We can visit each other. That would be yeah. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds super fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, uh, Echo, thank you so much. I think yes. we have talked for almost an hour, I think. that's So I hope that we can, I mean, like talk with each other again soon, maybe yeah. on a different topic, but has sure. something to do with mermaids as well. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you so much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure getting to know you better and chatting with you today. Definitely, definitely. All right. So you I, for, for our viewers out there, I hope you guys really get to learn about everything that Echo had said today. That's very, oh. that's a treasure for, for all of us to learn. So yeah, well, thank you everyone. Thank you so much thank everyone you, for I your time. You oh, there's a lot of love coming you. up. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. That's, how, that's how we usually say, you know what is this, right? Hearts. Oh, this is yeah. The gesture. Yeah, this is the new okay. gesture that, that, that most people are doing right now. Hearts. It used to be like that or like this, but now it would be like that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>